Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Brandy, and you may have seen the name change from Project Manuals to Curly Girl Cuisine. That's me. That is still me. We just went from a family uh, YouTube channel that never really got off the ground when I absorbed it and sort of took it over. Between the hair that is self-explanatory and 20 plus years in the kitchen, it seemed only fitting. So I do hope you guys stay around with me. I just wanted to give you that quick explanation. Today, I am going to teach you how to meal prep oatmeal jars five different ways, guys. So hang in here, let's get into it. It's gonna be super easy. Now, the things that you're going to need, mason jar lids and pint-sized mason jars. You can use the metal ones or these reusable dishwasher safe screw tops. I will link those down in the description below. I do like to use a wide mouth um, funnel just to keep my South Paul mess off the counter. If I can help it, you'll need measuring spoons and measuring cups and then your ingredients. So easy peasy, not a big thing. In each jar, we're gonna put one third cup of oats and I do assembly line everything just for um, ease. So a third cup of oatmeal and I just do that in every jar. You know, I always say batch everything. And there are, as far as I know, unless you're cooking just a super, super high-end dinner and you wanna get those out while they're hot all at the same time, I say batch everything otherwise. Next, I've got some chia seed and flax seed. If that's not anything you're interested in, go ahead and skip, but I need um, fiber. <laughs> and both of these ingredients are powerhouses as well as just a nice source for healthy fat. And so I do drop those in there. They don't have any taste, honestly, apart from the look and the, the fact that you may need a little bit more water than what you're used to, you're not gonna notice these are here too much. Okay, so we've got a tablespoon of chia seed, one teaspoon of milled flax. Now don't get the flax seed that's not ground down and think you're good to go. Essentially, our body needs to be able to absorb um, flaxseed. And when it's in that whole form, we don't break it down. So do get the milled flax. The next ingredient, and it is optional as well, is collagen peptides. This is just the brand that I happen to use. I haven't delved deep into the different brands to find out which one's better, but this one seems to work really well for me. For starters, it's got about 18 grams of protein. So if you eat this oatmeal for breakfast and nothing else, you're getting a really good source of protein by having it in here. There's no flavor, there's no texture change, there's no anything. So I do put one scoop of collagen peptides in my oatmeal. Now I do suffer from shingles flares up, flare ups. <laughs> Um, every once in a while. And so I was taking lysine on a normal basis, um, but I got to where I wasn't taking my medication like really well for a while. And always when they're starting to flare up, I can feel a little bit of a tingle on the back of the shoulder. What I noticed when I started adding collagen peptides to my oatmeal is, um, so collagen peptides have a lot of amino acids that your body doesn't produce on its own. One of which is lysine. So this was awesome for me. Since I have done this, I don't feel a tingle on my shoulder anymore. I haven't had an outbreak of shingles. It's been really, really great. So on to the next thing. All right, so we're gonna start with my first oatmeal. This is my normal standby, and it's just easy. I don't have to think about it. It's pleasant, all that good stuff. So the first thing we're gonna need is dried cherries, chopped pecans, strawberries, oatmeal, and a little bit of vanilla. All right, so this is my normal standby. I just put a little drop, just a little uh, bloop, of vanilla in there. And then I use one tablespoon of cherries, one tablespoon of chopped pecans, and a healthy sprinkling of cinnamon. And then I put fresh cut strawberries right down over the top. And again, I don't add all of these things that you saw me add until I'm ready. Now the dried cherries and the pecans, I will leave them in there on a normal basis, but 
no one else in the house likes dried cherries. So I've gotten to where I don't do that unless it is specifically for me. But this one is done. All right, oatmeal number two. Hear me out. Banana bread oatmeal. All right? All right, you're speaking my language, right? Okay, again, so there are a couple standbys I have clearly. One is gonna be vanilla. I love vanilla. I don't need like an over ridiculous amount of it, but I like it. Just a sprinkle of nutmeg, a good healthy sprinkle of cinnamon. I do love cinnamon, probably too much. About a tablespoon of walnuts and then a half a banana chopped up. Now, if you've got really ripe bananas, don't worry about chopping them. You don't need to. And then I forgot in the last recipe, but what I also add to these, and I'll do this at the end, is um, maple syrup. So you can add brown sugar or white granulated if you want, um, maple syrup or um, honey, agave, whatever it is that you like. I like maple syrup as a sweetener. It's natural and um, it just tastes really good. So that's what I'll use in a minute, but oatmeal number two is done. Oatmeal number three is up. Okay. All right, coming in hot in number three. And actually this may be my favorite treat for breakfast. This one actually feels a little bit like dessert. Um, I was talking to my sister and she suggested I call it um, Cherries Garcia, which I was going to do, but I looked at that ice cream and there's, it's just like chocolate chips or whatever. So I don't know, you help me come up with a good name for this, but cherry chocolate oatmeal. It's so, so, so good. So in this one, we are again, I don't know how you guessed it, gonna add just a little bit of vanilla. And then this one's a little messier, which is why I put the funnel here. All right, so for the cherry chocolate oatmeal, I've got cocoa powder and this is the unsweetened. There's no sugar or anything in this. Um, I've got dark cocoa powder, some chocolate chips here. I've got about a half cup of frozen cherry, sweet cherries. So the cacao nibs are a good source of fiber and uh, just like an okay source of protein. You'd have to eat like three tablespoons of them to get four grams of protein. So maybe not the best there, but the fiber is spot on. So just the little bit that I've got in here is about three grams of fiber, which is great. We'll go ahead and dump those down in, follow them with our cherries. And then that one's done. So you see, if you've got an idea on what you're doing, these do not take very long at all. On to oatmeal number four, we've got apple pie oatmeal. You guys, this one is fantastic. Of course, it's better in the fall when you're cold all the time and apple spiced anything sounds great, but really, it's just a really nice breakfast. So we've got our little bit of vanilla we're putting down in there again. Pretty healthy amount of cinnamon. And then I actually had this in mind, not because I usually buy apple pie spice, but for some reason it's in my pantry and I figured what better time to use it than right now. So just a little splash of that. And I say splash like it's a liquid. <laughs> just a little sprinkle of that. One tablespoon of pecans. And then we're gonna put our apples down in and this is about a half an apple. For number five, I've got peach cobbler oatmeal, okay? I am so serious. So a girlfriend of mine and I actually fell in love with this about a year ago. I don't remember where I saw it, but it looked delightful. I've got another tablespoon of pecans going down in there. A little bit of vanilla. I know I didn't start with it this time. I don't even know what's going on. You are right, a good sprinkle of cinnamon. And then I've got about a half a cup, and they're just canned, of canned peaches in peach juice. Now I didn't put the peach juice in there, but there are the peaches. And you guys, these are delicious. All right, and so the day of that is, those are the steps that you'll do to go ahead and get those ready for yourself, but to chop a little bit of fruit um, and throw any other wet ingredients in that day, that's easy, we've got that. When you're ready to add your hot water, you're gonna go ahead and add your maple syrup as well. So I add about a tablespoon. You may not need that much, you may need a little more. So just hit that sweet spot and you can always adjust after it's cooked, no big deal at all. All right, so that one probably needs just a hair more. All right, 
All right, so we've got our syrup in here. We're waiting for our water to kick off. When it does, I usually fill them, oh, right around to here. I don't know what that exact measurement is. I would start with a third to a half a cup of water, stir it and see where you're sitting. If you've still got oats that aren't wet, if it's a struggle to, to mix it together, and it may be inside these jars, like these apples, I would probably not um, cook them inside the jar just because they're so full. Now there are other ones like this one and these ones, I know how they break down and so I'm not worried about it. Um, I, I have actually uh, many a meal eaten out of these mason jars, but feel free to dump it into a bowl um, so that you can actually keep it from boiling over quite as much or so that you can uh, just be able to mix it without making a huge mess. All right, I heard the kettle kick off. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and add our water. So you'll see that it, to begin with, there's a bit of a barrier. I forgot spoons. <laughs> so you'll see that starting off, there's a little bit of a barrier. If you just go ahead and give it a good mix. And if you'd prefer milk, please do go ahead I have used water for so long, it's no big deal anymore, but it's all personal preference. So see, it doesn't look like it's taking up that much space. It looks like it's probably gonna be just fine. And that's the way we're gonna leave that, okay? We'll move on to that next step here in just a minute. And again, I don't think I'm gonna do these in here. I'm gonna grab a bowl for that one. So give this guy a little bit of water and give it a stir. And see, this one needs a little bit more water but you do want to be careful in putting too much water uh, in any of them that have frozen fruit. For starters, that liquid, there's going to be more liquid as it, um, as it defrosts in the microwave. And actually, I think that one's going to be just fine. I just hate adding too much water. It ends up being really, really soupy. Next is our banana bread. And my husband actually, this is his new favorite. I mixed it with a little bit of peanut butter the other day and he is hooked. So this is his favorite, favorite, favorite. And I think this one's gonna need a little bit more water. And so when you get used to it, you can kind of play around with that amount a little bit. You know how you like your oatmeal, right? You know if you like it thinner or thicker or however that is. And they do grow, they'll cook those um, oats will get you know, they'll absorb the water and kind of fluff up. So it's not just this much food. It'll end up being a little bit more. And then lastly, our good old standby, strawberry and cherry. And that one will need a little more water. There we go. And I've got a bowl for the apple pie one. I've got it right here. So we're just gonna dump it, right? And pull everything out. And it is not gonna be very, <laughs> it's not gonna be very pretty, but it's oatmeal and it's not known for being pretty anyway. We've got it in that bowl. I would suggest just a little bit more water. The way that chia absorbs so much water, it actually makes for a little bit of a more consistent, thick, texture. So from here, I put my oatmeal in the microwave for 30 seconds at a time. The first 30 seconds, stir it. And then the second two 30 seconds, I do not leave only because it has spilled over on me so many times that I got smart about it. So, so we've got all five oatmeal guys. I hope this helps you to be more successful or have new ideas in the morning to know that you can meal prep part of something without prepping the rest of it, just to give yourself that one leg up in the morning when maybe you've got only one eye open, maybe you're not quite all there. And to eat a nice filling breakfast will really get you running on all those cylinders that you need. These oatmeals are here to help you. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, give me a thumbs up down below. And also, if you do like meal prep, budget saving, and copycat recipes, go ahead and subscribe down below. Ring that bell so you don't miss a video, and I will see you next time. All right, hear me out. Banana bread casserole.